from the internal anatomy, and then there's another one on 440 showing you the internal anatomy. So, okay, so our starfish, when you flip it over on the underside, this would be the mouth. These are all the little cylindrical tube feet that have suction cups on the end that can either hold on to the substrate and they use them to move, you know, they reach ahead, stick down on something, and then they pull the foot back so it causes the animal to move like that. So it's used for locomotion, it's used to hold their prey, arches over a clam if it's going to eat a clam and pull it apart, etc. So those are the tube feet. The water vascular system starts with the sieve plate or also known as the madreporite, either way, whatever call it. Yeah, they're all calling them the mad, yeah, they're using the term, the technical term, I'm surprised. It's, it's called the madreporite. That's okay. That sort of colloquial term is the sieve plate. It's like a screen. It essentially filters any, uh, it's a coarse filter of the water that's going to enter the water vascular system. There, it keeps out larvae and debris and things like that. It's just like a screen or something. To uh, it's called the madreporite, M-A-D-R-E-P-O-R-I-T-E. And then the water vas, so that's the outer part of the water vascular system. It then connects to a what's called the stone canal, which is here and labeled on this figure. That goes down to the ring canal. This is the stone canal here from the madreporite. So the water goes in through the sieve, down the uh, down the stone canal, and then enters into this ring canal, which is around the mouth. Here's the mouth. Then it radiates out into each of the arms. You can see this radial canal. It's actually underneath this piece here, so you can't see it. This one, they've cut it off to expose the the nerves that are underneath it. So. This would run out the length of the body all the way to the tip, and then it branches off to the side to these tube feet. These are the, uh, actually the tube feet are down here. These are the ampulla. Yeah, here they are. A-M-P-U-L-L-A. They're the bulbous part of the, at the top of the tube foot. When that squeezes down, the muscles contract, it forces the water into the tube foot, and the tube foot gets longer. When the tube foot contracts, then the bulbous, uh, uh, ampulla swells up. All right, so that's the water vascular system. Starts with the madreporite, down the stone canal, down the ring canal, radiating out into each of the arms in the radial canal, and then to the ampulla and the tube foot. Following that same pattern is the nervous system. Underneath the ring canal is the nerve ring, which is this yellow structure that you see here, again, surrounding the mouth. And it radiates out into each of the arms underneath where the where the um, uh, radial canal is for the for the water vascular system is the radial nerve. That's the yellow color here. So there would be a nerve, and then these little side branch nerves would go to each of the tube feet. So to control the individually the tube feet. All right. As far as uh, digestive system goes, the mouth is on the underside, as I said. Then we have two stomachs. This smooth one here is known as the, do they label the cardiac stomach? No. What do they call them? Yeah, the cardiac And the pylori. Okay, so they're using the actual technical terms. All right, this is called the cardiac stomach. This is the one that can come out the mouth and turn inside out. It can uh, uh, extend it out through the mouth and then into a clam shell or uh, over. If it was feeding on coral, it would just spread the... The, uh, the stomach out and start secreting digestive enzymes to digest away whatever it's feeding on. So the food would go in here through the mouth in, into the first stomach or the stomach would come out and take the food in. And then it goes from the, from the uh, cardiac stomach to the second stomach called the pyloric stomach. That's this kind of five shaped structure here with a branch connecting to the uh, digestive gland. That's, there's a pair of digestive glands in each arm. So this connects to here. So, and these secrete digestive enzymes that go into the second stomach for further digestion. And then it's very short and stubby, but coming from the, uh, the uh, pyloric stomach is a very short intestine. And you see these like look like little flower petals radiating out? Those are the... Um, uh, intestinal ceca, 
they're called, just side branches of the intestine to increase the surface area. Because the intestine's very short, so it has these little side branches where uh, absorption can occur. And then the anus would open up at the top. So mouth on the undersurface in contact with the substrate, anus at the top like that. Okay, anything else in there? I think those are the, that, that's the main, the main uh, structure. Mouth, cardiac stomach, pyloric stomach, digestive glands, uh, the intestine and the uh, intestinal cecum. Ring canal, the uh, water vascular system, madreporite, stone canal, ring canal, radial canal, and then side side canals branch to the ampulla, the bulbous part on the top, and the tube foot, the part that comes out underneath here. Oh, there is one more uh, thing I forgot to mention here. You can see the gonads located. There is a pair of gonads in each arm. Here's another pair here. These two, from th this one from this arm and this one from this arm, share a little oviduct, which would open at the uh, crotch of the, where these two arms come up. So there'd be one oviduct opening or sperm duct opening if it was a male, oviduct if it's a female. Eggs would come out here or sperm would come out here. This one and the one that would be here would come out here. There'd be another one here and here would come out there, another one here and here would come out there, and another one there and there would, would exit to the outside there. So you have five gonopores where the, either the eggs or the sperm come out, the oviduct or the sperm duct. Okay, that's that. Let's try the...